there's only one way to lead touch him. You just believe when you call on his name. I mean, you may be seated while I read these requests here. Amen. We have a few requests here that we're going to read before we go to the Lord with our petitions and our needs. Aren't you thankful this morning we have a Heavenly Father to go to? Amen. First one reads, Brothers and sisters in Christ, please pray for Sister Monica's supervisor's family. The wife requests prayer for her husband. For her husband. May Lord, the Lord have his perfect will. He knows the need. God bless Sister Corey. The next one reads, Brothers and sisters, please pray for traveling mercies for Sister Pam as she will be flying to Phoenix to be with Sister Tammy, Brother Joe, and grandchildren tomorrow. Thank you for your prayers, Brother Tom Sr. The next one reads, Pray for my nephew, Julian, and his wife, Tara, who will be traveling tomorrow. May God's traveling mercy be upon be upon them and return them home safely. Sister Judy. And brothers and sisters, please pray for my sister Julia, who is at home sick from heart from heat exhaustion. God bless you, Sister Camelia. Let's also remember our Sister Deborah Pye. She had surgery, and I was able to see her after the surgery, and she was doing fine. So just uh, uh, keep her in prayer that God will give her a speedy recovery. She'll be four to six weeks with her brother recovering. So let's Take these needs, brothers and sisters, and let's go to the Lord. If you have an unspoken request, just make it known by the lifting of your, your hand to him this morning. And he knows all things, and he's here with his people. I believe he's here with his children this morning to meet every need. Amen. To just supply every every need, every request. Father, we just come before you. We come before your throne of grace and mercy. Lord, just thanking you for giving us this privilege to, Lord, to come before you and to ask you for our petitions and our requests. These requests, Lord, I place my hand on them. They've been made known to your people. And by faith, we believe, Lord, that you're going to move on the scene and you're going to minister to each need that was presented to you before the redeemed body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, may you answer every request. Father, in the name of your beloved Son, Lord Jesus, these written requests, Father, we believe by faith, Lord. We don't waver this morning. We believe by faith. Lord Jesus, that you will meet every need here. And for every hand that was raised up in divine presence, God, we claim that need right now, that you will supply it. Lord Father, you have given us all things, God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. We have access to all things, Father. Amen. You will withhold nothing from your children from your people, Lord God. So we claim all things. We believe all things, 
We receive it right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. We're happy to have our guest speaker this morning, Brother uh, Pastor Brother Rod Rody, who I've known for quite some time, and many of you know him. And uh, he's here with his wife, Sister Carol, with my brother Rod. So he will be coming just in a bit, and he will address the body and uh, speak to you and give his little testimony and whatever's on his heart. Amen. We just want to hear from the Lord, don't you? And so we're glad to to have have our precious brother, our pastor there. He pastors a group there in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and the Lord's really blessing them. And so we're so glad to hear that. That, Amen. God is is blessing that work there. So let us stand, brothers and sisters, and let us welcome our pastor brother, Rod Rody from New Mexico, Albuquerque. Amen. And just give him a warm welcome. Amen. Amen. Let's sing Amazing Grace as our brother is coming. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and it was grace my fears did relieve. How precious did that grace grace appear the hour I first believe through many you may be seated for a moment it's certainly good to be in the house of the Lord amen, amen. everybody happy yeah. we got a right to be happy yeah. I'm happy yeah. amen I've been happy for about 40 years now <laughs> so even though there's been a lot of hardships 
been a lot of trials, a lot of miles, a lot of, a lot of miles that I didn't want to walk, but looking back, found out they were for my own good. Amen. You know, I was, we were talking recently there in, in Albuquerque how that your trials, you know, when you're, when after the storm's clear, you know, you find yourself kind of like the ark in a little higher place than you were before, before the flood came. You know, and, and you can look, you go, wow, it looks nice view up here <laughs> once it's over. But I, I'm so grateful to be here. I uh, wanted to give a little bit of a, a testimony. But first of all, Brother David, God bless you. Thank you, Brother David. I told him we wanted to come out and say hello and visit. And he said, well, preach. I said, well, I'm not for that, but okay. We, anyhow, but Brother David's persuasive, but God bless you. And Sister Belen, God bless you. Thank you for your hospitality. It's so good. You know, if there, you know we have new friends. And thank you, Brother Man does say there's something about the old friends. Amen. 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 Says that. And we, this is, uh, many, many of you who don't know me, but uh, I'm Brother Rod. Brody came in the message here in, in uh, Sacramento and, in 1976. I'm going to give a little testimony. Before I do, I want to say I'm thankful to my wife. This is my, this is my wife, Sister Carol. Amen. God, God bless your brother Robert. That's her brother. God bless your brother Robert. We're uh, But... Uh, you know, we each have a, te we all have a testimony. You know, and I want to just, because when I came here in 1980, but I want to give a little testimony because people have asked me, how did you come in? How did you get here? You know, and, and at the time, the, there was, it was a church, I'm going to say, of 30 to 40 Believers meeting in an alley in a city of a half a million, and my path got there right away, and it was nowhere near where I lived. So I, I just want to I want to give a little bit here to you know because because Brother Branham says that God is able to direct His word. He'll make it somehow, some way where that this message, these books, these tapes. They will fall into the hands of the predestinated of God because God can direct His Word. Amen. I was, just a, I was just a young kid living in Southern California and I accepted the Lord and I, and I just, I, I felt like Abraham. I felt like, get out of here, I'll, I'll show you where I want you to go. And, and I didn't know and, and I, I, I kind of said, well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go to Fresno. And, and I didn't know, it. I, wound, I wound up, well, we wound up here in Sacramento. And I had been here one time before. And when I was here, I, I, this is the only place I ever made that statement. I said, man, what an ugly town. Because whatever part we were in, okay, every town has that. But I, I made the statement, I said, I would never live there. Two years later, I was here. <laughs> So, but I, I worked, I came here and worked, and I worked at the graveyard shift, and I was in the grocery store. This was in 1976, August and September of 1976, and, and uh, I had been here a couple of weeks. I knew nobody. I worked overnight with like three people, and I would go to this Baptist church and this Pentecostal church and this other, whatever church there was, just go to church, and I, I, I had accepted the Lord, and I, I wanted to serve him, and and I, I, Lord, show me what to do. Show me where to go. Show me what's truth. I don't know, Lord. And, and so I, I worked overnight on a Saturday night to a Sunday morning. I'll try not to be too long on this, but okay. But, but and I, got off, I got off of work, and I went to church. And went all the way across town, went to, went to a Pentecostal church. And, and bought a newspaper. I went back home, and I went to the church section. And there was going to be... in downtown Sacramento, there was going to be a man by the name of Peter Popoff. He was, supposed to, he was a prophet, they said. And he was going to tell 40 events prophetically that were going to happen in 1977. And I thought, this is awesome, because God knows, and he told somebody, and I want to know, because I'm going to tell everybody too, because God has told this. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. 
So I had, I had, I had been up all night. I was ready to go home and go, go to sleep. But I went back across town and went to hear this brother that was going to tell what was going to, this minister was going to tell what was going to happen. I wound up sitting right, beside, right behind an elderly couple. And the man, after he was preaching, he was asking for, for, for money and offerings, and I didn't have much. But what I had, I emptied my wallet, and I gave it to him to take the gospel behind the iron curtain. And after I did that, the brother, the elderly brother, turned around. He goes, next time you should be a little more careful with what you do with your money. And I thought, I've done a lot of things with my money in my life. And <laughs> this is the one time when I thought this is about the best thing I've ever done with $100 in my life. And this brother tells me, you should be more careful of what you do with your money. And I was like, what should I have done with my money? Look at him. Look at his wife. Look at this. And he just went, Tori, you look at she looks like this and that. And that and you want to hear the truth? Follow me. And I'm like, I want to hear the truth. Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I'm after is the truth. So I went on the back alley, followed him in, on Del Paso Boulevard to the church. Now, you have to understand, forgive me, because I don't want to, I'm not making light of anybody or anything. I had worked all night. I had gone to church in the morning. I had waited two hours for the afternoon. I, it was 5 o'clock. I, I was whooped tired. Most boring service I'd ever been into in my life as far as I, I, was, I just, I mean, I was, I was falling asleep. I couldn't help it. There was a brother from Oakland and God bless the brother. Um, you, you understand, I don't mean it that way, but I was just too tired. I could, I just, I was falling asleep. And, but I, I got there and they got information with the pastor and they talked and where are you from? I said, well, I just met this one here and I'm here. I, and, and I just, came to hear the word, and, and God bless you, thank you, and I, I knew that, that I would never see anybody. I, in my mind, I knew I would never, that was it, you know, so the word had crossed my path, and, and nothing took place, but I did give some contact information. Two weeks later, I'm home praying, and I do want to say this, I worked overnight again. No one ever visited me. I didn't know anybody. I was in the afternoon, it was a Saturday, I'm praying at my house at a little condo off of Greenback. And I was praying for help me. I don't know what to do. I love you, Lord. I don't know where to turn. I don't know what's truth. I've been to this church. Lord, help me. And I'd pray. I poured out my heart. I said, Lord, help me. No one ever knocked on my door. As I'm praying, I get a knock on the door. I, I open the door. Guess who's out there? Come in. Wow. I said, did God send, is this, I'm praying, is this who you sent, Lord? And so I'm hearing, I'm hearing, and I'm like, this is, why, forgive me, Lord, if I'm stubborn of heart, change my heart, it needs to be changed, but I'm hearing it's not clicking. So we spent, I spent some time with them, and they left, and I went back in the little upstairs part, went back upstairs to pray. I said, Lord, I know you're speaking to me. I know you're dealing with me. Help me, Lord. I want to be able to follow. I want to know. I want to know what's truth. While I'm praying, another knock on the door. It's my testimony. Hey, we have a test my testimony. Amen. So I went back downstairs. Jehovah Witnesses that showed up at my door. It's the truth. Jehovah's Witnesses had knocked at my door and came in and talked to me and shared with me, and I'm like, I don't understand. I don't know. And, well, after about another 30 minutes, they left. I went back to upstairs. I'm praying a third time. As I'm praying the third time, anybody guess what happens? It's the knock on the door. No, the knock on the door. No cell phones then. You know, but it's a knock on the door, and my heart was going. And I didn't get up. I heard it again. 
I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on, Lord. I know you're dealing with me, Lord. And then finally, I, I almost got pushed up. I said, Lord, forgive me. I ran as fast as I could. I opened the door, and there's a car going, driving away. And I go, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't know. I looked down. There's a sealed book and a church age book on the doorstep. <laughs> Amen. God's able to direct his word. Amen. And, and just, just for another, there's, I, I could go all day testifying, but just for another side note, after I came back, after I came to the church, after reading that, had the information, I'm like, oh, my, this is the same thing that I heard. I'm like, oh, forgive me. I'm sorry, Lord. I, wow. And I started reading. I'm reading the church age book, and it's like every page, I'm like, I've read this before. I've been here before. This is, there's, this is, oh my goodness! And it just, you just read it, and it's like you, you've, you've read it before. And that was in, that was in, uh, in uh, November of of 1976. So, but uh, matter of fact, the first service I was at when brother, his name was brother Houghton, was there. That's when they announced the birth of, not Lawrence. Sunshine. Yeah, I told, I told brother, I tell you when your son was born, November tenth, nineteen seventy six. I remember, the, I remember when I came in the message. That was the following Sunday. But, but when I came back to the church, I so much wanted to see brother, brother Fromfield. He was the one that said, "You'll be more careful with how you spend your money." And they said he had, they said he had, he had moved away. And I felt bad. And I, I wanted to tell him, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to say something to somebody who desperately needed to hear this. Someone that God had foreordained. You know, and 5, 10, 12 years went by, and I said, well, he, he was an elderly gentleman. He's probably gone on with the Lord. And I just, you know, I was like, well, one time I was in a service. And it was in Mesa, Arizona. And I came outside of the, of the service, and I saw an elderly man there with a cane standing there. And I said, Brother, excuse me. Are you Brother Fromfield? And he said, yes, I am. He goes, do I know you? And I said, Brother, do you remember the, the meeting of Peter Popoff in Sacramento? He goes, Brother, don't tell me that's you. I go, that's me, brother. I go, the assistant pastor of this church, brother Bob, I said, I, I brought him to this mess, introduced him to the Lord. I, There's a brother pastoring in Colorado, and then, and then we, could go, we could go on, and on the song leader from here came through brother Bob, and the list goes on. You know, and some people, they make statements like this. They go, well, I never brought anybody. How do you know that? How do you know that? It was 15 years later. This brother had, didn't have a clue of what a few words did. Amen. Changed my life. Brought this word across my path. God knew what he was doing. Amen. I'm grateful in my heart for that. Amen. That's that. We all, I know we all have our testimonies. But praise God. That I, I do believe this. Now, don't, don't let the devil sell you short. Amen. God knew what he was doing when he let you hear the truth. He knew what he was doing. Amen. He knew what he was doing. I love him for it, brothers and sisters. God is so good. Amen. Are you happy? Amen. Let, let's, let's stand to our feet if we can. We'll take a scripture. We, we're a little, have a decent crowd. A lot of times I was looking around and I, and it, it's not, Brother Larry, it's, it's not as extreme. I, I, we, I mean, I if I get slobbered on, that's okay. That's all right. I didn't, I didn't, it didn't bother me. I was fine with it. Praise God. It's pretty good. No, I don't, no, it didn't bother me. He says, he goes in the, he goes, the brother over here, he goes, the one that's here, the last one sits right there. He gets here late, so he gets the front pew to himself. So, I don't know. He says, but God bless you, and just as long as our hearts are warm to hear the word, Amen. Let's take a. I'm gonna, we're going to talk about an Exodus today, and 
If we put a title, it would be a stretched out arm and great judgments. Yeah. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, and Exodus chapter 6 and verse 6. You just want to take a couple of places. That was pretty quick. They're not that quick in Albuquerque. They're pretty, they do good. They do good. This is a little faster now. Exodus 3, 7, and 7. We were right the first. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Amen? Amen. Exodus chapter 6 and verse number 6. I love how it says, I've seen the affliction of my people. We were still his people. Amen? Like we heard on, on Wednesday, like that, that, that lily. Amen? There was something that was inside of it that needed to be expressed. Exodus 6.6 6 reads like this, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. If we could bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, what a privilege, Lord, to be able to come. What a privilege to be called your children, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have given us this opportunity to come and, and voice your word, Lord, and fellowship around your word and around your throne, Lord, to have the opportunity to come and, and worship you and hear from you, Lord. And as we come and approach this portion, Lord, as we have read your word, the prophet so many times would say, anyone can turn back the pages, Lord but we need you to, to open the context and open our hearts, Lord, so that we can either speak, Lord, or receive or hear what you would have for us this day, Lord. Father, have your way with this service and all that would be done and all that would be said, whether we're preaching, Lord, whether we're hearing or on the tape record, whatever we are, Lord, that we would be able to, to, be able to say when this service is over, Lord, that it was like those on the road to Emmaus, as the prophet would often say, Lord, and and we would say our hearts burnt within us, Lord, for you spoke to us. That's our desire and that's our prayer, Lord. Bless each one, Lord. Bless every effort from every son, every daughter that's come this day, Lord. We place ourselves and commit ourselves into your hands, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. <clears throat> well, our, our scripture here, in Exodus chapter 3, the Lord says, I have seen the affliction of my people. How many believe God sees today? Amen. 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 I've seen. You know, I believe God sees. But I, 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 I love just just taking the time and just studying the Word and just looking at what the Bible says and seeing how, how it would speak to me. I, I love to read the Word and allow it to speak to me. That, that's me. That's a personal thing with me. Is say, Lord, what do you have here? But when I do read, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. But then it goes on and it says, and have heard their cry. You know, how many go through hard times? Amen? We go through hard times. And see, and a lot of times you go through some really rough, hard miles. And, and so many people I find that, that I, I, I don't call it a character flaw or whatever, but a lot of times they feel that, that they're just called to just bear this heavy burden on their own. You know, and, and, but the Bible says... I have seen the affliction, and I've heard the cry. The Lord, the, the, for it to come to fruition, the plan and the purpose of what God was going to do, two things had to come into view. It wasn't just that they were afflicted and going through a hard time. God saw that. Right? God 
that you're to bear it alone. The Bible says something. We ask him this. Amen. He sees and he knows what you're going through. You want him to come on the scene in your circumstance? Call him. Call him on the scene. That's the word of God. Praise God. Amen. Don't, don't settle for less. Otherwise, it'll just be get beat down, get beat down. Well, the Lord wants me to go through this. Well, hold on. When are we going to call on him? When are we going to cry out? See, their, their bondage was, was in the natural. A lot of people today, well, I'm struggling with this, and I'm struggling with this, and I'm just trying to overcome it. Well, get a, begin to cry out. Amen. Amen. See, because if we go to the message and we read the message, total deliverance, right? God don't do a halfway job. He doesn't just, just do this little bit and leave the... No, he, and they said, finally they tell Moses, okay, all, 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 all right, well, well, it's been kind of rough and been kind of a hard, a hard road. I'll tell you what, you can go worship your God, but I'm only going to allow this and your wives are going to stay and the children... Don't bring this. No, 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 no. No. We're all going. We're, we're all going. Not one hoof is going to stay behind. Because we don't know what the Lord's going to require when we get to where we don't know we're going. We don't know what he's going to do or what he's going to say, what he's going to desire from us when we get there. So we're all going. That's what Brother Branham says. God does a total deliverance. But we get a little wishy-washy. We get a little compromising. We get a little, right? We, that's human. Well, the, the word exodus, right? And generally associated with a large group. Exodus. It means a calling out. Now, once again, the book of Exodus deals with or speaks about the children of Israel being called out of Egypt. And it's a perfect parallel for us, brothers and sisters. When I read, you know, I, I've always known that. But the level of, of you know, how Brother Brown says in the Revelation of Jesus Christ, and he, how he says, you know, all Scripture has a compound meaning. Then he, page 506, for those, those of you who know, it, he, says, he says, now watch the compound coming of Elijah. You know, he, he says that, right? We know, we know those, hopefully we know those Scriptures. But he, it's all Scripture is compound. Uh, and he, he uses, for example, he'll say, he'll say, out of Egypt have I called my son. Because I'll see some people and they'll read a certain, well, this is already fulfilled. Well, yes, it was fulfilled and it's going to be, it's being fulfilled and it's going to be fulfilled. That's why God fulfills it. Out of Egypt have I called my son. That was fulfilled in me. That was fulfilled in you. Amen. It, the Bible says fulfilled with Jesus and it was fulfilled in the Old Testament. So Brother Bram will use that like those type of things for an example. Amen. Not so much the a slavery as the Egyptian, but the bondage or the slavery of sin. Yeah. Now, Exodus means a calling out. The word church means the called out. Right? right? Yeah. Now, Brother Branham says that Israel, were, they were the people of God in Egypt. And the Bible says that because we just read it. Exodus 3, 7, I have surely seen the affliction of, it doesn't say some people, or a few people, or a nation, it says my people. So God identified those people as being his people when they were in this condition. People. The Lord identified that. So, prophet of God says, when they left Egypt, they became the church of God. Right? They were the people of God in Egypt, and when they were called out, they became the church of God. Same with us, right? When we're called out of, out of sin, out of bondage, and you know, in God's church, just so we will know, I believe we all, we all understand that, and I know you're taught right here, and praise God, thank God for a pastor. Thank God for a pastor that will stand and preach the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ and will stand true to the word. Thank God. Praise God. 
Amen. That that he that someone that won't have to have to make sure I take the pulse of every individual to make sure that oh I better not say this and because I, I might step on this toe or I better not preach that because I might you know it reminds me of the of the one that they call the evangelist to town and they says well what do, what do you want he goes well we don't want you to preach about about gambling because the, the head deacon he has a rap Jews in the church you know you you, 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 <laughs> you understand. Or the, or the preacher, they called him to preach a, preach a revival. And they're all excited to come, and he's going to preach a revival. And the first day he comes up and he preaches, repent! Amen! And they, they loved it. They thought, yeah, this is awesome! So they said, let's see where he's going to go from here. Next day he gets up and he preaches, repent! And they're like, that was still pretty good. But third night, he, he, he says, okay, let's see where he's going to go. Repent! After about the fifth night, they're going, I don't know about what, what's going on. He goes, he goes Can't you, don't you have something else you can preach? He goes, oh, yeah. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff we got to preach on, but let the people repent. And after that happens, then we'll move on. Amen. Then we can move on. Get that in line. Amen. When that happens, then we can go. Amen. We, sometimes we find ourselves as preachers, we move on and on and on. Let's back up a little bit. Settle this. Let's get this settled. Praise God. Amen. So we don't join God's church. I've often said, it's like the prophet of God would say, he, goes, he says, I've been a, a Branham for 50 years. Amen. I broke I love Brother David. What Brother David said, you know, in our modern theological world, and, you know, we heard that Wednesday, so I'm not going to stay there much, but, he, you know, he's talking about how that we want to we want to modernize everything, and that's, with a little baby, it's, you know, just, if you have a need, just ring this little bell, and, and, and Mommy will take care of you, because it doesn't, that's not God's provided way. Amen? So... So when someone asks you, you are you are you a member of a church? Amen. Yes. You are. You may, oh, I didn't think you. Oh, I'm a member of a church. What church did you join? Now I, I didn't. I was born. Yeah. I was born into this church. Amen. It's God. Now, prophet of God says five definite identifications of the true church, living God. He says in the Old Testament, the known church was called the kingdom of God. God's kingdom. He says, now I'm taking this from chronology of the Bible. The Old Testament, the church was called the kingdom of God. In other words, God is a king. And the church is his domain. God's kingdom, and he says, that's Old Testament. It's like what Jesus prayed, and they, they can't perfect it no matter how much they might try he, he prayed in the Lord's Prayer. He said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God does it in order. Right. Amen. First thing that had to happen, because he says, the Bible says, He ascended on high and gave gifts unto men. Right. Amen. The first one, before He ascended, He descended first to the lower parts of the earth, then He ascended and He gave gifts unto men, and He gave some apostles, some prophet. He gave, he gave, God gave, God gave. What was that? That's his kingdom. That's God's king, his spirit in vessels that he's called Old Testament. He says, this is what it was called over there. Old Testament, God's king. He says, thy kingdom come. Then he says, how perfectly? Thy will be done. Thy will was not going to be done until the kingdom comes first. The kingdom comes and he sends and he sends for the pastor here. That's part of his kingdom coming. That's part of the unfolding of the plan of God when he sends forth his work and let it unfold so then his will can be done inside his kingdom through the subjects of his kingdom, which is you and I. Amen. That's God's order. You can't get better than God's order. Lord, that your kingdom come so that, so that those that I call that will be called and sent would do your will. Amen. Praise God. Well, I didn't finish.
finish reading here, but in the Old Testament, it was called the kingdom of God. Then he says here, in the New Testament, it's called the Messianic Empire. Otherwise, the Messiah's Empire. Amen? Where the Messiah rules and reigns. That means anointed one, the Christ. Christos in the Greek, Messias in the Hebrew, Christ. No denominational barriers or nothing. The Messiah rules in his empire. Messianic empire. Therefore, the church is not an organization. The church is not a gathering of people. The church is the people of God that's been called out of this world to serve in another kingdom. Amen. Praise God. That's messianic empire. Praise God. Amen. We're called. He called me. And once again, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing when he called you. God doesn't make those type of mistakes. He doesn't save you today to lose you next week or next month or next year. I have pretty much in every Bible, I have a, a, little, a little quote here that I, and from God keeps his word. Brother Branham preached this message, this title message, the day I was born. But, but here it says, I love this. I love all the message. I love all the word. But this, but this one here made it to the flyleaf. Okay. Says, but in the church of God, you are not voted in or voted out. Amen. You're born in once for eternal forever. Only God can put you out. <laughs> Someone. This has, wouldn't happen here, I know, but if they would get so mad at what I said and escort me right out of the building, no matter where it would be, that does not escort me out of God's church. Right. <laughs> you, you understand that? Really? You're too ready. You can't. You can't do that. Okay, let me get, read this again. Okay, just, just. But in the church of God, you're not voted in or voted out. You're born in once for eternal forever. Only God can put you out and he swore by himself he would never do it. Amen! Amen. Praise God! Only God can put us out! And so he knew what he was doing when he called me. He knew what he was doing when he called you. He knew! He saw it! He saw that I would, that, that, that I would, I would be like, like, like that that eagle egg in the in the chicken yard and they would and the the scratch scratch and cluck in the barnyard and all what's going on and this manure don't taste very good at all and there's something better until this scream of the eagle comes. What was that? Amen. What was that? Where? Up here! Up here! Amen. Brother Bounces, when when you heard that the living word of God was eagle. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Brother, they would do it to Brother Branham and then he'd come back again. He would tell Brother Branham the brother would be preaching and he would say, God bless you, brother. And he'd preach a little more and he'd say, God bless you. And they'd say, what, what are you doing? The brother says, I'm charging my battery. <laughs> charging my battery. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, charging my battery. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. I'm getting my battery charged. Amen. So, some... I heard part of a message the other day, and then, and after about five minutes, church service was going on, and, and I heard, "Amen," and the and the preacher goes, "I think uh, someone needs to turn on the air conditioner." They asked Brother Ben, and they go, "I love the preaching, but what if, with all that hollering and all that screaming, how do you preach with all that going on?" He says, "Brother, that's the only way I can preach." Amen. Praise God! That's what, that's what Brother Brown says, saying amen 
to a preacher is like saying, sick him to a dog. Get up! Sick the devil! Praise God! Amen! Okay, let's get to our... Man, I'm going too slow. I've got to move, move. Faster, faster. Oh, my goodness. I love the Lord, love His Word, but Exodus chapter 6. I haven't even touched anything. But Exodus 6. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of Egypt, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. There's two things here. That once again, just just like just like the other, you know, he heard and he saw two things here, and then, I guess this is how I read the word. Okay, so so you kind of get familiar with you, with, with with me and how I am. There's two things that says, it says, I will redeem you, one with a stretched out arm, and with great judgment. There was two things that would be associated with this redemption or with this exodus, brothers and sisters. That is a stretched out arm, and with great judgments. Amen. You're going to be associated with the stretched out arm. Or if you refuse to get associated there and relieve, believe and receive that, great judgments. And don't blame God. Don't blame anybody. Don't blame the preacher for not saying it. Don't, don't blame anyone. Just look in the mirror if you want to blame somebody. Said with, with stretched, a stretched out arm and with great judgments. For those who would hear the message of Moses, it was God's arm being stretched forth in His love, in His mercy, in His grace. For whoever would not, great judgments were going to come. Now before we get any further, brothers and sisters, we do understand and we know that, that redemption, the prophet of God says, has two parts. Amen? It unfolds into more and we could go into a lot of under the two, you could you could keep branching. I understand that, but but basically on, on this, we just say a, the redemption is a going out of a place or a condition and a going into, right? That's 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 redemption. Amen. And we understand that that restoration goes in in there too. So we we understand that. But a, the parallel, once again, brothers and sisters, is amazing to see what God has done and what he what he continues to do. Now. Uh, I have, I'm going to skip. I'm going to go, I, I got to go move a little bit quicker here. I want to. I want to. Uh, I want to read Exodus. I could refer to it. Exodus two twenty four. I'll just. Read. God heard their groaning. And God remembered His covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Not as though. Don't take it as though God had forgotten. Okay. Understand. God, doesn't, God has not forgotten. But it, it, it brings to the forefront of His remembrance when He hears us. It serves as a reminder of what we were called for, what we were called to do. When He heard their groaning, that is what brought to fruition what He had said He was going to do from the beginning. But it waited and waited and it waited. Brother Bram said things have a, t things have a time of, of lingering, he even says they were living, I believe he uses the word many times, presumptuously. Right? They were living presumptuously. And they were, they were, they were, they was, wasn't, it wasn't too bad for quite a while in Egypt. Right? It wasn't too bad. It was going pretty good. And then, but there had to, things had to happen. Things had to unfold. There had to get a, a Pharaoh on the throne who knew not Joseph. Some of those things had to come to pass. To, call, to, to make the people a little less comfortable in where they were at and in, in this modern age. God has never wanted His church to be comfortable here. That has not been God's purpose. That has not been His plan. You might want to get comfortable and I might want to get comfortable, but that's not what God intended for us. But then, then it got so bad that they began to they began to pray. Amen. It got so bad that they got on their knees. Maybe they didn't pray. Maybe you haven't prayed like you should, brothers. You know, Brother Branham says it it it, well, it takes it takes an emergency or a crisis to bring a desperation. It shouldn't be that way. It's always been that way, and it continues to be that way. It shouldn't have to be like that, but that's just the way it winds up being. 
Hallelujah. Well, the time of deliverance drew nigh. Or, someone told me, what does that mean? Well, got close. All right? The time of deliverance, and brothers and sisters, I'm going to read over here in Exodus 12, but, but things got real serious because God had said what he was going to do. You know, the Exodus for the children of Israel, 1211 is where we're going to go. The Exodus, it was a serious time. Right? The death angel was coming. <clears throat> right? The, death, the, the Lord had said the death angel was going to come through the land of Egypt. <clears throat> well, the people of God had been given commandments of what to do. They had heard the message. The message told them what to do. <clears throat> but it was a very, very serious time. The death angel was coming. A great deliverance was at hand and great judgments also. On one side, Pharaoh over here, he refused to let the people go. Judgments were going to come. On the other side, the people of God had been given commandments of what to do. And this is in Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. He says, Thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, with shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, they were told, slay the lamb, apply the blood, right? And don't go out of your house. Stay under the blood. Amen? I believe the blood has been applied to this church house, to this church door. Amen? You come in where the blood has been applied, where God has chosen to put His name, and as long as you stay there, you're protected. That's what Paul said. Except ye abide in the ship, you can't be saved. Abide in the ship, stay here. That's God's program. That's God's kingdom again. That's His plan. Stay inside. Stay in the ark. Amen. Where are we at here? Sorry. Thank you. Verse 11. Yes. Now he says, Slay the lamb, apply the blood. It was death or it was life or death. Now how he says the Passover was to be eaten. You know, a lot of times what we do, we, we love to, I mean, we love to sit down, kick back, relax, you know, right? Enjoy. Here, the Passover, it wasn't like that, brothers and sisters. With your loins girded, with shoes on your feet, with your staff in your hand, hurry up and eat it. Right? In haste. It all speaks of a preparation, brothers and sisters. They were to be ready for marching orders. Amen? Amen? That was, that was God's program or God's plan in the book of Exodus. I don't believe they even sat down to eat. It was a, it was a hurried up manner. You know, once again, it speaks of not getting too comfortable in what's going on. Amen. I, I, I'm not trying to be depressing. I hope I don't depress anybody. You know, I mean, I mean I, I, if you have a fat 401k, well, praise God and God bless you. Praise God. God bless you if you do. If you do, well, praise God. If you don't, well, then praise God. Amen. Amen. And, and so, Brother Brown says it like this, okay? There, there will be as many penny heirs in hell as there are millionaires. Because it's your attitude about it. Amen. Okay. All right, so, so it's not like you're a sinner because you have something and and, and, or you're a sinner because you don't. Whatever, whatever. God has, there's times that you read that Abraham was the poorest in the land. And I read another place, Abraham was very rich. We find Job over here. We find Job over there. Either, either way, what, did, what was Job's testimony? Amen. I'll stand. I'll serve. And what, what, did, what, did, what did Job say? Slay me! I'll serve him. We find Job, brother Brown said they ask him, when are you gonna get him off the ash heap? Amen. When are you gonna get him off the ash heap? I don't know. We're having a good time here. He's on the 
You know, one time, one time I was studying, I was studying in the book of Job. I, I was studying and I'm reading about, about Job on the ashes and, and, and I just felt the Lord just asked me, do you know where he got the ashes? And he told me, from the burnt offering. He said, I'll sit on the ashes of the sacrifice that I made to Almighty God. I'll sit here, though oh, it looks like all's gone. I've made my peace. I've made my offering. I've made my sacrifice. And here I'll sit. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> okay, we only got about 10 minutes. We're going to have to... Go. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the, the children of Israel... My goodness, they had gone, the water turned to blood. They had seen frogs and they had seen lice and flies, cattle, boils like Job. Hail, locusts, darkness. And then the last one, death. Amen. Exodus 12, 29 says, It came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, he did not get a, a, a free pass. Right? It's like, okay, everybody, but you know what? Pharaoh, no, we not, no, we can't go there. No, no. Struggle.